Kingdom Kids, it's Reverend Renee Jones. I'm so glad you joined me for another exciting word from the Lord. But before we get started, let's join the kids with our praise song. Hallelujah, in the morning when I wake up, I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. I will shout, I will dance to you. You are giving me God, we thank you for this day and all of your many blessings. God, we thank you for one more opportunity to hear from you. Now we ask that you will open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts, that we will receive all that you would have us to know. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture this morning is coming from the book of Acts. That's Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. And I'm reading from the New International Reader's Version, wherein these words are recorded. A man named Cornelius lived in Caesarea. He was a Roman commander in the Italian regiment. Cornelius and all of his family were faithful and worshiped God. He gave freely to people who were in need. He prayed to God regularly. One day, about three o'clock in the afternoon, he had a vision. He saw clearly an angel of God. The angel came to him and said, Cornelius. 
Cornelius was afraid. He stared at the angel. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you. Amen. Our memory verse is, faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. The title of today's message is, Reach Out, I'll Be There. Kids, I'm so glad you're here as we continue to take a closer look at what our faith life looks like. Remember, Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Maybe it seems strange at first to think of something that you can't see, but actually we do it all the time. Okay, let me see if I can show you. Everyone, stand up, stand up on your feet, stand up on your feet. Okay, great. Now, start jumping. Jump, keep jumping, keep jumping, keep jumping. All right you may take your seat. Now, let me ask you something. When you jump just now, did anyone keep going and float off to the air? Or did everyone stay planted on the ground? Of course not. We can trust that gravity will keep us on the ground. We, aren't, we can't see gravity, but we sure notice with if people were floating around in the air, Having faith in God is just like that. Maybe we can't see God with our eyes, but when we focus on the things that he's done in our lives and in the lives of other people, we know that he is there and we can trust in him. I have another example of faith. When our ancestors were taken from Africa, our homeland, and they were bought here and they were put in slavery. They didn't know when or how they would ever be free, but they sang songs and they prayed and they believed one day God would hear them and that they would be free. Well, here we are today. We can go to schools that we wanna to go to. We can live in any neighborhood we want to live in, all because of their faith and because of our faith. God will continue to move in directions that we never can imagine. Every day we can choose to live in God's way. And when we do so, our faith grows stronger and stronger. I want Jesus to be my number one focus. I really, really do. Listen to what the prophet Jeremiah wrote in Jeremiah 29 and 13. He was sharing God's word to God's people. When you look for me with all your heart, you will find me. That's true for us too. If we focus on God, we will find him. Have you ever met someone that you thought you knew but you really didn't know and you didn't discover that until much, much later? I know I have. People are always surprising me. It can be so easy to think we know people without really getting to know them. One of Jesus' followers, Peter, discovered this in a very big way. Allow me to set up today's story. The early church was growing quickly. Peter traveled from town to town, telling people all about Jesus and even healing the sick. In a town called Joppa, Peter even raised a dead woman back to life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Many people in Joppa became believers. So Peter stayed there for a while with a man named Simon, who was a leather worker and lived close by the sea. Meanwhile, there was a Roman army commander named Cornelius who lived in Caesarea. Cornelius wasn't Jewish, but he and his family worshiped God and they truly believed in him and they were generous to all of God's people, anyone who was in need. Cornelius often prayed to God. One day while praying, while he was praying, God sent an angel to him in a vision. The angel told Cornelius to send 
men to Joppa and bring back a man that they call Simon, who was also Peter. Listen to what the Bible says. Now send men to Joppa. Have them bring back a man named Simon. He is also called Peter. He is staying with another Simon, a man who works with leather. His house is by the sea. Cornelius did exactly what the angel told him to do. He called two of his servants and one of his soldiers, and he sent them to Joppa to find Peter. About noon the next day, Peter went up on the roof of the house to pray. He got hungry while he prayed, and he wanted something to eat. Good. While the meal was being prepared for him, Peter had a vision. Check this out. This is pretty wild. He saw heaven open. There he saw something that looked like a large sheet. It was being let down to earth by its four corners. It had all kinds of four-footed animals in it. It also had reptiles and birds in it. Okay, what is that all about? A large sheet filled with creatures? I have no idea what that would look like. Maybe something like this. Well, no, no, no. I can't even imagine what it looks like. Well, listen to what happened next. Here's what the Bible says. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, I will not, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything that is not pure and clean. The voice spoke to him a second time. It said, do not say anything is not pure and clean that God has made clean. This happened three times. Right away, the sheet was taken back up to heaven. You see, Jewish people were forbidden to eat the meat of these kinds of animals, which were called unclean. According to God in the Old Testament, as you might imagine, Peter was a bit confused by all of this. He wondered, what does this vision really mean? Just then, the men sent by Cornelius arrived at the house. They asked Peter if he was staying there. God's spirit told Peter and to tell them, yes, that he was. The men told Peter that Cornelius had sent them. Peter then invited them in to be his guests. Here's a little more information you should know. Just like it was forbidden for the Jewish people to eat certain types of foods, it is also against the rules for the Jews to enter the home of non-Jewish people. At some point, Peter realized that God was telling him what to do next. Peter understood that God was making new rules about what was clean and what was not. The story of Jesus was not just for the Jews, but for every single person everywhere in the world. The next day, Peter and Cornelius' men set out on their journey to see Cornelius. Some of the other believers from Joppa went along with them. They arrived in Caesarea and went to Cornelius' house. This was a big deal for Peter because he had never stepped foot inside of a home of a non-Jewish person. Cornelius was so happy to see Peter. He had all of his family members and friends to come to hear what Peter had to say. Now Cornelius was an important man, but he lowered himself to the ground before Peter as a sign of deep respect. I'm sure Peter appreciated this respect being shown to him, but he told Cornelius to stand up. He said, I'm only a man myself. Cornelius then explained everything the angel had told him. Then it was Peter's turn. Peter shared with everyone how God had sent Jesus to share God's love. He told them how Jesus had taught and healed people through God's power and the power of the Spirit. Then he told how Jesus had been killed and on the cross and how God had raised him on the third day from the dead. He even told them how they had seen Jesus and had a meal with him even after he was raised from the dead. And that was what Jesus wanted Peter to share with everyone that he came in contact with. 
Finally, he told them how everyone who believes in Jesus sins would be forgiven forever. While Peter spoke, God sent his Holy Spirit to Cornelius' family and friends. The Jewish believers who had come with Peter were amazed. God had given his spirit to these new believers even though they weren't Jewish. Peter then baptized Cornelius and all of his family and all of his friends in the name of Jesus. I'm sure it didn't look like it was a party going on. I'm sure it did look like a party going on. Now clearly that's not uh, what the big fun was all about. Back to the story. Peter stayed with them for several days. His view of other people had totally changed. Peter understood this. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see others. Because of Peter's faith in Jesus, he was able to see that God's story really is for everyone. Peter knew Jesus, so he was willing to see others the way Jesus saw them. As a result, the lives of many, many people were changed forever. Let us pray and ask God to help us to see people as he does. Dear God, thank you for loving everyone. Thank you for inviting all of us to be a part of your big story. Sometimes when we see people who are different from us, it's hard for us to remember to reach out and get to know them. Thank you for reminding us today that you want us to love and include everyone around us, not just the people who are most like us. Please help us to see other people the way you do. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, kids, what another great reminder that God sees everyone as super, super valuable and important. God told Peter that he should give others a chance. He wanted Peter to reach out to Cornelius and his family, even though they were from different backgrounds. Because Peter did, Cornelius and his whole family put their faith in Jesus. If you think about it, we too came to know Jesus because of our family members or friends or someone we know told us of his love for us. Way back at the beginning of God's great big story, he told Abraham that he would bless the entire world through his family. Fast forward all the way to today's lesson and we see how God showed Peter that his story is for the world, just like he had promised to Abraham. Remember, knowing Jesus changes the way we see others. Here's the thing, God wants us to love all people, even if they're different from us. Some people might talk different than we do. They might even look differently and think through things a little differently. They might even uh, do things different from you and I. None of this means that you can't like them. When you know Jesus, that means we should love others just as much as he does. He wants us to love everyone around us. Our faith in Jesus helps us to focus on others. It helps us to share God's love with everyone we meet. And that's the good news for today. Amen. Remember to have to join us this week for Zoom. We have a great game plan for you. And ask your parents to sign you up for the virtual vacation Bible camp that will be held in July. See you next week. Hope all is well. Bye.